everybody and welcome to Couponing 101 where we want to help you save big. Today I want to talk to you about how exactly to get started on your couponing journey, a journey that will take you to a lot of fun places, helping you save money and enjoy lots of name brand products that you probably thought you'd never be able to enjoy. If you'd like to see how to get started on this venture, just stay tuned. In order to begin your couponing journey, there are a couple of things you are going to need to gather up. Now I do understand that when we first begin couponing, we often do so because our finances are in such a state that we have to find a way to save. And so extra money to gather extra supplies might not be in your budget right now. And that's okay, we can still get started, but these items are a couple of things that you will eventually need to gather together to make your couponing journey the best it can be. The first thing that you're going to need is, of course, the coupons themselves. And I know that some of you have had the question, where do I find coupons? Well, the first and most obvious place, and my place of choice, is the weekend newspaper. Just about every weekend, the newspapers will include in there two particular coupon resources. One from the Smart Source and one from the Red Plum. About once a month, you will also see included in your local newspaper an insert from Procter & Gamble that has a lot of great products just from them. The reason I still choose to get the weekend paper is because along with these three sources of manufacturer coupons, there are also coupons included from some of your local area stores that will offer discounted rates only in the local paper. And these you usually cannot find with online clipping services. Another source of couponing is the online clipping services that I just mentioned. It is illegal to sell coupons. However, there are some people that will charge you minimal amounts of money to clip coupons for you, saving you time and energy. Sometimes in your local area there is coupon distributors that you can also find a name for that you can meet up with that has coupons available for you. And of course one of the greatest sources of coupons is online printables from places like coupons.com. When you visit certain brands or certain stores Check the website really well because most companies now have a section on their website for printables just for their product brand. And then there is of course certain magazines you can order, All You is one of those, that does include monthly coupon deals. Another thing that you are going to need to take a little bit of time to invest in is a good printer, preferably a wireless printer. The online printable coupons that I mentioned to you earlier do allow you to print two coupons per device. That means per computer, per cell phone, per iPad. Any device that you have in your possession where you can pull up the internet and print from. So that is why investing in a good wireless printer is important. Sometimes deals roll around that you are going to want to make sure you take advantage of in multiples. And the only way to do that is to have multiple coupons. Yes, it is a little bit of an investment to purchase the printer, to purchase the paper, and to purchase the ink. But most of these things you can get each week with coupons and sales at your local office supply stores. And you'll be surprised at just how much you'll save after making the initial investment. Another supply that you are going to need is something to keep your coupons in. Organization is key to minimizing confusion when using coupons. You can use the file box method. This simply is a cardboard file box that you can pick up at your local office supply store. In this box you will have index cards that you can put in there to categorize your products. This helps you to know exactly if you need paper goods that you can flip to the paper goods section and find everything from paper towels all the way to garbage bags. And this is one source that will help keep your organization optimal. 
If you would prefer not to carry around a big bulky box, another option for you is the coupon binder. This is the particular method of choice for me. It is easy to carry around, it is easy to organize, and it is also easy on the eyes. This is a three inch ring binder in which you can insert plastic sleeves that are designed to hold baseball or football cards. They are just perfect for holding your coupons. You can also buy dividers to slide in there that will categorize your coupons just like in the file box, but it's just a little easier on the eye and a lot easier to flip through because your coupons are already separated and organized. Another system that people choose to use is the accordion file box. People who choose not to clip their coupons each week but instead keep their inserts whole and together typically tend to use this method. They will carry this with them to the store or as they're matching their ad sales each week, they will clip coupons as they need them instead of clipping the coupons all at one time. That is up to you on how you choose to do it, but these are three options for you in coupon storage, and you will need to choose one or the other to get started. Another very important resource for you as you are getting started in this couponing journey is store policies on coupons. My suggestion to you is that you go online to places like walmart.com, cvs.com, walgreens.com, and a whole host of other places and download the printable version of their coupon policy. It is important to remember that each chain of stores has their own way of handling coupons. And as a matter of fact, I have even discovered that even within a chain of stores, individual stores and managers can also have their own way of managing coupons. Print these out, read over them, get a good grasp and a good understanding of what the coupon policy is before you even enter the store. It is important to arm yourself with knowledge so that you don't commit any type of coupon fraud or so that you don't miss out on the best opportunity because of an employee's lack of knowledge of their own coupon policy. Another thing that is very important to keep in mind as you begin this couponing journey is exactly why you want to coupon to begin with. Couponing is a great way to save your family lots of money, stretching your monthly budget and also keeping a surplus of goods on hand where you can help others around you who are in need. The whole point of couponing is not just to go gather up as many free items as you can just to have them around your home. The idea behind couponing is to get products that you will use at a very discounted rate while you can so that when you run out you don't have to pay full price. So it is important to have the mindset of stockpile. You do need to have a place in your home where you can begin to store multiples of the same product. Coupons generally come around in cycles. They go along with the seasons. So at a particular time of the year when things like ketchup and mayonnaise and mustard are going to be on sale and you can maximize your discounts with coupons, you're going to want to stock up because then you're going to come into a few months of the year where you will not find a sale on these items and you don't want to have to pay full price. So it is important to go ahead and begin to change your way of thinking. Couponing is not about just going to the grocery store this week to get what I need now. Couponing is all about beginning to stock up on items for a discounted rate so that you never have to pay full price again. Another thing to keep in mind as you are deciding to begin this couponing journey is that you're not in this in a race to compete with anybody else. Sometimes in the couponing community we can see deals and sales that others are taking advantage of and we feel we have to rush right out there and jump on these sales and in actuality sometimes that can end up costing us more in the long run. This is about what is best for you and for your family and that may be a deal that no one else would ever want to take advantage of and then there may be deals that everyone else is taking advantage of that you never would want to. So always keep in mind that the first priority of couponing is about your own personal family budget and what is going to benefit you 
the best. One of the things that I wanted to mention to you is that early on, whenever I began couponing years ago, one of the mistakes that I made was thinking that I had to take a coupon and run right out there and pick up that item because I was going to be saving a few cents on it. The problem with doing it that way is that you will end up buying things that you never would usually use or you'll jump out there and you'll use a coupon without waiting for a sale to come along to partner with that coupon and in the long run you can find that you will waste more money than save. And that was my frustration for the longest time. As a matter of fact, I got so frustrated with that that I quit couponing altogether for many years. The thing about coupons is that you need to hold on to them until you can partner them with a sale, whether it is at your local grocery store or whether it is at a local drug store. When you watch the ads and can partner a great sale with a good coupon, you are going to maximize those savings and be able to bring products home for really pennies on the dollar and that is the way you need to begin using your coupons. It is also important to begin thinking of coupons as money. Those coupons are a guarantee from the manufacturer that they are going to pay the store owner that amount that is on that coupon. It is in essence money. So don't pass over coupons, don't throw them away, don't think that it is just nothing that could ever benefit you because in essence you're throwing away money. Begin to value the coupons, save them up and put them to work for you. One thought that I want to leave with you is that as you begin the couponing journey, don't get frustrated if you don't get a lot of great deals right away. It really does take a little bit of time to get the flow going. Go on out there and get you some sales this week. Feel good about those sales, but don't be frustrated that they may not be exactly what you see your neighbor getting. It does take a little while to begin to store our coupons up. It does take a little while to memorize policies. It does take a little while to learn how to match sales with coupons. All of that takes time. And if you are like the rest of us, you are going to make some rookie mistakes in the beginning where you walk out of the store and think, oh man, I blew that one and I could have saved a little bit more money. It's all part of the learning process. So never let that frustrate you or cause you to give up on this journey. And one final thought to keep in mind is that couponing does require a little bit of an investment to begin with. When you head out this coming weekend on Saturday or Sunday, whenever your local paper happens to come out, you are going to have to invest a little bit of money in purchasing those coupons. But I can guarantee you that you will save more than you will invest. But it is like every other business opportunity. You do have to put a little bit out as you're getting started. So I want to encourage you today that start this week. Whenever the weekend rolls around, come on and get out there and get your newspapers. Go online and research some clipping services or even talk to a neighbor about giving you their leftover papers. Go online and begin printing coupons today. Let's start storing them up. Let's start getting them organized so that we can save lots of money. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode of Couponing 101. Until next time, this is the Frugal Rev saying, go get you some savings.